economical, political issues. Let me share with you, the Jewish people who were second class in the Roman Greco world was looking for a Messiah that would crush the head of Caesar and overthrow the government. That's why the Republicans, listen, I don't mean no harm, y'all. Listen, and this same-sex marriage stuff is awful, but you need to stop being deluded that America is a country that's a nation under God. Americans' principles had nothing to do with God. The only reason they allowed the freedom of religion in this country was to watch this, to, to, to satisfy some economic expediency. Because when they were the Constitution, the founders of the Constitution is of 97% of them are lawyers. And they was not thinking about the church, but the church had some people in America called the, 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 the pietistic movement with the, your, your Quakers and your Mamurians. They really love God. The Church of England with the Catholic Church was still importing God here. They made God here. And they paid the preachers in America to England paid the preachers here, and they had the stale church. They had a whole bunch of Bible verses with no God experience. There were some people who really wanted to taste and touch God. And so what they did was during the time of the revolution, after the war, they went to Madison and Jefferson and them and said, listen, if you don't do something about this religion, this freedom, we still going to have to pay taxes through the church back to England. And so they said, oh, wait a minute, we don't want no parts of England. We'll put that in the Constitution. It had nothing to do with God. And today in America, don't you know this is not a democracy, this is a republic. America was based upon the Roman Greco world where the Caesars was homosexuals and was married men. So you think they care about married men? They can take all the prayer out they went out of school. As long as they got tests, my children are going to pray in school. They're going to pray in school. Lord, help me with this test. So don't, don't get confused by that when you're home. And my little right-wing Republican buddies, listen, they're the same people that will bomb abortion clinics and the same people that will fight against abortion but cut, cut funding for the children after it's born. Same people will cut money for children that are born, but they'll, 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 they'll blow up an abortion clinic in the name of Jesus. More folk have died in the name of Jesus than a little bit because of misinterpretation of the word of God. Don't get fooled. Don't get fooled by this right-wing Republican foolishness about they love God and they hate homosexuality. That's why they keep getting outed. Y'all get that one on the way home. They're just as homosexual as the Democrats. Y'all remember, remember 12th Street, D.C., back in the 80s when them boys was taking them young boys, them chickens, and riding them down in them limos? Those was government cars. Why do you think the prostitutes and the young homosexuals come to D.C.? They ain't coming for you and me. We ain't got that kind of paper. Why do you think that? Come on, you, you better wake up. Why do you think they make drugs a problem? They'll make drugs a problem in the black community until, until Republicans and white folks start calling buying them drugs. That's what it is. And without proper interpretation of the scripture, you will be hoodwinked into thinking something that ain't. And you will live your life, watch this, under the guise of theology instead of practicality. And so Jesus was trying to tell this religious teacher, this certain lawyer, listen, man, it ain't about what you know, it's about what you do. We want to spout what we know and say where we come from. And, you know, and I, I'm in seminary with the guys, cemetery, seminary, and I love learning. And, you know, but you better be saved before you go to sem sem seminary. You better know Jesus before you get there. You better know that you know that you know that God came by and touched you. And so, 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 Pastor Kirk, I'm, I ain't going to bother your people much longer. I, I, I just want you to see this, y'all. In this text, what God is doing is he, he isn't God when you have a conversation. God is doing the, God is doing, watch this. God is, he, in this text, God is producing proper hermeneutics. He gives, he gives, he gives interpretation, he gives illustration, he gives application. Huh. Bible teaching without illustration, without historical, literal context, and without illustration and application is a bunch of foolishness somebody told you. People of God, watch TV programs, you buy these guys' tapes, and do all this stuff, God bless them. If you examine it under the eyes of the Bible, you look at this stuff and say, most of this stuff is insanity. Because they realize that 85% of the people that sit in the pews don't understand the scriptures. And so I can say to you what I want to say to you, and I can get you to do what I want you to do. Bible says, the Bible says, and Mark, it says, and, 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 um, and Judas hung himself. Doesn't it say that? 
And doesn't it says um, in Bible writing it says, and do ye likewise? And notice it says, whatever y'all do, do it quickly. Well, if you don't understand the proper interpretation, somebody can tell you to go hang yourself and do it quickly. And so, 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 so this, so we we go. We're going to leave you all alone. Pastor Kirk, in verse 25, I see this theological examination. But verses 26 to 28, I see, I, see, I see Jesus' divine inspiration. And in verse 30, I see the, 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 um, the, the clarification of the illustration. He says, he, he gives them two issues. He, he, he creates a social situation, and then he calls, he, he, see, to hear, he, this is when you know it's Jesus. The, the verses, the verses, in, the verses here with, 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 the, with the peace with the Levites, he, he always, Jesus, when, whenever God, he always causes a theological juxtaposition where you and I have to struggle between what he says and what's done. There's always that tension. See, the difference between Jesus' teaching and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that theirs was, was straight cut. When Jesus came, he said, he teaches with authority because Jesus always causes tension. He said, I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. Uh, the, the, the mothers will be against brothers. He said, in fact, if you're going to follow after me, that you even have to hate your own life. That's a juxtaposition. It, it always. If, in, if any man come after me, you must pick up the cross. The cross was a, say, a sign of a bunch of criminals and thieves. Pick up the cross. Don't you know who we are? We are the Jewish people. And so whenever Jesus speaks from his word, it will always cause you and I a, 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 a sociological juxtaposition in terms of struggling. I remember when I first got saved in my WBC days, way before Christ. Some of you got BCs. I was a player player. I was a Sigma womanizer. I had girlfriends on North Philly, West Philly, Mount Airy, had a couple down D.C. I run down here to see, hit New York. But there was a juxtaposition. He said, thou shalt not fornicate. That was a tension. Y'all looking at me funny. That was a tension. Here's a man whose orientation, you ain't praying with me. My orientation into females was through my older brothers and my father. And my father happened to have 16 children. Nine by my mother. Y'all get that one on the way home. So my orientation into the opposite sex was that they were objects of my own pleasure. But when Jesus told me to love my wife as Christ loved the church, there's a juxtaposition. Y'all looking at me funny. And what Jesus was trying to get to this Lord is not what I say, what you say. is how you deal with the juxtaposition in your sociological view and how you view yourselves and other people. Y'all looking at me funny up in here. And we won't, we won't ever, 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 ever understand God until you, you wrestle with that juxtaposition. Now, 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 some of you going to win. Thank God I won that one. Because that one will end me up broke and divorced. And your kids hating you and diseased. You ain't praying with me. Come on, y'all looking at me funny. But some of us have some, some issues that are not as obvious as mine. I was a wine drinker and a, come on, a publican and a party animal. You ain't praying. I party like a rock star. Y'all looking at me funny. And, and let me share with you, I still wrestle with that. I love partying. Listen, I was on my way to Georgia Avenue to go find this boy across the street who had to work at the store who sold go-go tapes. You ain't praying with me. I needed some trade wins. You ain't praying with me. I wanted to hear, come on, y'all looking at me funny. Y'all act like y'all know who trade wins. I wanted to hear some Michelle Blackwell talk about the razzle-dazzle. But I, I, there's a juxtaposition. There's a struggle in me. Y'all looking at me funny up in here. Now, I know some of y'all sophisticated. You know, you, you, you went to HU. You know you got your master's degree. You, come on, you got more degrees than a thermometer. You the boss on your job. You wear the shirt and tie on Sunday, roll up in here with Pastor Kirk, and we sophisticated, but there's some secret stuff. David said there's some secret stuff. You, you, you know that orientation of those issues from your childhood and from your development that you don't want to give up. Come on. The theological question has nothing to do with what I know in my head, but how much I'm going to wrestle with this text. And, and, and sometimes you got to wrestle till you get to your grave. 